Good morning. Today is March the 16th, and on our church calendar it tells us, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, but rather serve one another humbly in love. How very appropriate. It starts to prepare us for tomorrow, March the 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. You know, we don't know when St. Patrick was actually born. What we really know is when he died. He died March the 17th, 1461, 1560 years ago. That's when he passed away. But we do believe he was born in 390. So tomorrow, on what would have been the date of his death, we're going to celebrate his life. As people have been doing now for more than 1,500 years. It's really interesting because people around the world truly celebrate St. Patrick's Day, and we really do here in the United States. I mean, every year in New York, there's usually a parade with more than 200,000 people in it. More than 3 million people will usually show up to see it. Don't know what can happen this year in the midst of COVID, but that's what's been happening now for more than 250 years there in New York. In Chicago, where the river runs right through the center of the city, they turn it green. They've been doing that for more than 40 years, the Green River running through the middle of Chicago. No, millions and millions of people celebrate St. Patrick. But you know, the fascinating thing is, St. Patrick isn't Irish. He's not Irish. No, he was born in England. He was born in England and raised with a good family. He was given a good education. He was brought up in the church, though Patrick would say, his faith really didn't mean a whole lot to him when he was 16 years old. No, when he was 16 years old, it turned out that there were Irish raiders who would come from the island, sail over to England, and there they would come and kidnap children. They would come in the middle of the night, steal the children before parents were even awake or knew what was happening or could form a group to respond to these raiders, and these children would be carried back to Ireland as slaves. The Irish were participating in slave trading. And that's what happened to Patrick. At 16 years old, the raiders came. They took him one night. His parents woke up the next day, and their son was gone. He was taken to Ireland, and there he was sold to a man who made him a shepherd, sent him out into the hills of Ireland to tend the sheep. Now, when you were sent out to tend the sheep, it means that you'd be out there for two, three weeks at a time and not see anyone. Sometimes it was a month, two, or three months at a time, which meant you suffered incredible isolation. Patrick said there were two things that were always his companion, hunger and nakedness. He was so much always having his stomach growling and so cold and alone. And it was there, he would be there for six years as a slave tending those sheep, from 16 to 22 years old. And it was during that time that he began to pray. And he started praying more and more. And he, soon he said, I was praying a hundred times a day and I was praying a hundred times a night. He said, I had so much time to be able to listen to God. And there he began to lay the foundation of his faith. A faith that would ultimately make him St. Patrick of Ireland. Now there's so much in Patrick's story I'm going to tell you his life story for the rest of this week, all the way through Friday. So many fun things to hear. But where I wanted us to start today was to understand that it was in the midst of the most difficult of times, in the midst of great adversity, that Patrick began to grow in his faith that would enable him to live such an incredible life. You and I have been living through a pandemic, such a difficult time. It's been a time when I believe that you and I have been growing in our faith, and I'm reminded that whenever we have a difficult time, whatever it might be, that's a time we truly can grow closer to Christ, grow stronger in our faith, in trusting in God's constant love of us as children, so that you and I can go forward and live a meaningful life. We're going to have a great time this week. We're going to celebrate St. Patrick, and I hope you'll go out today and live in that same spirit of confidence, knowing that now is a great time to be praying and growing. Have a great day.